All right, man, tell us who you are and why you're here. Yes, I'm Evan Murphy from the band Mile 12, and we're at Bluegrass on the Grass uh, here in beautiful Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And of course, we're, we're teasing with Evan because we, we know who he is. That's why we're talking to him. So, Evan, uh, it's been a busy winter for Mile 12. I understand you just wrapped up recording uh, the new album. That's right. We were at uh, the Great North Sound Studio, which is in Parsonfield, Maine. And we were working with this engineer, Sam Kassir. And Sam uh, might not be as well known in the bluegrass world, but he's been the longtime keys player for Josh Ritter. And he's produced some great artists like Lake Street Dive. And so he's a kind of a brilliant engineer. And we thought it would be cool to do something in New England and maybe even to work with someone like a little bit outside of bluegrass for this album. Well, you, you guys have a sound that some would say is a little bit outside of bluegrass, depending on, uh, you know, I always talk about the, the flat with two T's Earth Society, uh, <laughs> I like that. you know, but uh, it, it seems to me it makes sense to work with somebody that's produced other genres. How did it influence the album? Well, I think having Sam there as another set of ears was really cool because he wasn't listening to it as bluegrass, you know, he was just listening to it as music. Uh, like, just, just, he was kind of coming into it with a blank slate. Uh, no, we, we self-produced the project, so all those sort of big decisions we had to do by committee. Um, Sam was, you know, he's kind of hands-off for that stuff, but if he said, you know, that sounds, that sounds good enough, let's move on, we could really trust him, and trust his ears. Um, I think one of the things about this album is a lot of the material that Nate and I were writing before we recorded this, we didn't even necessarily know if it was Mile 12 material or not. You know, we were just sitting around like by ourselves during the pandemic and both writing songs, like maybe for a solo project, maybe for something else. So then when we got back together with the band and we started arranging the songs, there wasn't any preconceived notions. It was just like, they were just songs, you know? Um, they weren't necessarily bluegrass songs, but then we were arranging them with this string quintet kind of feel. And yeah, I really liked what, what happened with them. I, I didn't intend to, to go down this rabbit hole with you this afternoon, but... Oh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> We've written about this a lot and, and discussed it a lot with people and, and debated it. Is, is too much made of classifications and, you know, what is pure bluegrass, what isn't? Uh, shouldn't we really just listen and it, hey, it's good music or it's not? Right. I think that, that I think that's true. I mean, I don't, when you really start to try to define what bluegrass is, it does get weird. It's like what makes it bluegrass exactly. Um, I mean, I've thought about this before, you know, we play with this pretty strict bluegrass quintet kind of band, right? Like, we, there's no rule that said we couldn't put electric guitar or drums or keys or anything on this album, but I actually wouldn't have wanted to do that. And sometimes I think to myself, like, why, what is that? Why is, what is it about that, like, string quintet that I like, you know? And so I think it's like, on the one hand, I don't feel like all that preoccupied with defining bluegrass as like a thing, but then there is something very exciting about making music acoustic, you know? Like just what textures can you create on these five acoustic instruments? So I think that's what's exciting to me is like working in a string band, working in an acoustic project. And other otherwise, I don't think too much about like the genre. You know? Well, I, I mean, you know, and I've told you this before, probably my favorite Mile 12 song, uh, Jericho. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've, and I still believe that if somebody produced the right video with it, you'd run away at the Country Music Awards with that song. <laughs> Maybe uh, get Chris Stapleton to sing it or something. You nah, know? <laughs> I, I, you know, regardless who sings it, I just think it's, it's such a moving song. And it's really more a country song than bluegrass if you want to, try to give it a genre but right, right. Uh, but it's a it's it's a wonderful song and it, yeah. you know so who cares yeah yeah and even like i did oh, this yeah. solo ep a couple years ago with a rock band and like i grew up listening to bruce springsteen and stuff and i, I wanted to do something like 
kind of like that. But you, you, you tried to get me to review it for the British Bluegrass News, but oh, they, they right. said it wasn't bluegrass if, enough. If, that, that, if you want to talk about defining what bluegrass is and isn't, that definitely isn't bluegrass. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but Mile 12 does one of the songs that was on that EP now that I wrote, and it just goes to show that like, like when I'm sitting down to write songs, I'm not really trying to write bluegrass songs. I'm just writing in a broad you know, Americana, roots, country kind of thing, and then playing it with these acoustic instruments. You know. Now, what was the influence of the new kids on the album? Oh, well, I honestly, having Corey and Ella in the band, in some ways, it, it is almost like a new band, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's such a democratic project it's it's not like it's my project and that everyone else is just like a side person you know it's so democratic it's so everyone is involved that to have two new people in the band it really is kind of a new sound um they have fit in so well and they're both a pleasure to work with and incredibly talented and kind people and good listeners and like just you know have huge ears for all these different genres of music, so I thought it was a pleasure to have them on this new project, and they sound amazing. Yeah. Back in the fall, right after they joined, you'd already introduced some stuff that they wrote yeah. uh, live. Any of that make it to the album? Yeah, um, Ella wrote this beautiful song yeah. called Waiting. Um, she, she can be a little bit... Uh, withholding sometimes of her original music. We all know that she's good at writing stuff, but um, we had to beg her and cajole her a little bit. And we're like, just, you know, show us some of your songs that you write. And she is like, rolled her eyes and she's like, all right, well, I'll show you this one. And of course, instantly we were like, that's a very good song. We should record that song. So that's on the album. Um, we do this instrumental piece called High Ridge um, in our live sets that Corey wrote. And uh, yeah, and one of BB's beautiful, amazing banjo compositions is going to be on the next album. Um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's very much a group thing. Yeah. Now, I think you uh, said that till everything gets wrapped up, the mixing and uh, recording, the marketing, everything, probably early next year till it comes out? That's what we're aiming for, yeah, because we, we kind of just finished recording it like a month or so ago, and then we're having it mixed by Dave Cinco right now, who's... Uh, master when it comes to that sort of stuff and then we'll have it mastered and then we just kind of have to begin this process of like creating the publicity and releasing some singles and so we're hoping if that all stays on track that right at the beginning of 2023 we can officially be releasing it and between then and now what do you got on the books what what uh, where all can we catch you i know we'll see you down at the ibmas but where else yeah yeah we're gonna be at ibma this year and um we're going to be at some of, like, like the Thomas Point Beach Bluegrass Festival up in the Northeast that we love. Um, and other, otherwise, I, we're still booking some stuff for the fall. So check out mile12bluegrass.com, and, and we'll, of course, be active on social media and letting people know about our shows. And then we're also in the process of booking some, uh, some big album release tours for early next year that are still kind of in the works, but... Yeah. You, you should do do what I do and go on to mile12bluegrass.com to find out. I, I've, I've been on there, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, so we're, we're going to look uh, and keep an eye out for, for some local dates and, uh, you know, maybe something down at B Chord with you guys headlining. Yeah, uh, we just played at B Chord recently and we that, that place is super cool, so we'd love to come back there. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of our favorite venues. Yeah, it, really it's about a two-hour drive, but it's worth it. it yeah, it's, yeah. it's really great. All right, well, Evan, thank you so hey, much, man, so and uh, good to see you guys again. Look forward to the second set. All right.